Okay. Uh, so now, so you say you want to be sovereign? I said I need. Yeah, I need to be. <laughs> yeah, and well, it's <clears throat> now. Remember the word. We don't want to use the word sovereign necessarily. You do. You can use okay. it, but just not. Not. You don't want to. It's a trigger word. Okay. Because the the type of the type of game you guys are getting into is not the same. Excuse me. Excuse me. No, not the same game. Oh, dang, there we go. Excuse me, not the same game that I was into uh, 15 years ago, you know, 17 mm -hmm. years ago. So, um, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a little more nuanced, and they've been they've been working to uh, make it more difficult. Yeah, well, not even more, not even more. They've been working to try to destroy y'all. So, you know, right. they it's like a, or not even y'all. I'm saying y'all, but sovereign, you know, the sovereign citizen. Mm -hmm. And it's different and it's nuanced because you got Caucasian sovereigns <clears throat> or Caucasian patriots, and then you have um uh the, the Moors, then you have the Hebrew Israelites, right? And, you know, then you got um the Muslims, the brother the Muslims, the nation of Islam. <clears throat> so you got a whole lot of different statuses for for brothers or organizations and different things <clears throat> that you know brothers can get into you know uh, but it's not the it's not the correct shit and it's because you know that the the actual history has been taken that you know it leaves you with nothing so you got to kind of create your own shit and, and move towards that but you know what i'm saying it, it it basically still leaves you in a second and third class citizenship so uh, so it goes so much. The the reason this stuff is so ill is because you got so many types of people in America, and you got so many different types of status. Like, <clears throat> you know, most people don't even know how many different types of statuses there are on the books, and um depending on what you call yourself is how you <clears throat> excuse me is how you are uh, it gives you your your rights and privileges within within society so um did y'all y'all got your black law right uh, yeah okay. yeah why don't y'all give me look up status you know? a person's legal condition whether personal or proprietary the sum total of a person's legal rights, duties, liabilities, and other legal relations or any particular group of them separately considered the status of a landowner, a person's legal condition regarding it's just it goes into a second uh meaning. So say that to read that first part again. A person's legal condition, whether personal or proprietary the sum total of a person's legal rights, duties, liabilities, and other legal relations, or any particular group of them separately considered the status of a landowner. So the very first part that said what? It's the legal, what, read that, that part, that's the main part. Read it. The very, a person's the, legal condition. The purpose of a person's legal condition. <laughs> a very a person's legal condition. How you are in, in society is based on the law. You ain't just, motherfuckers ain't just sprout up and just walking around here without being un, un, unidentified. That's not what a civilization is. A civilization is like, we need to keep order because we got so many people around here. We don't know what's what, you know, different personalities all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Different, different philosophies, different, you know, different emotions. It's just crazy shit going on. So we gotta we gotta categorize shit. We gotta put shit in its place. So in status, that lets you know who the hell you are because we created something a, a, a stratification system where niggas gonna have to, niggas on the bot uh, on the top and niggas are on the bottom. So you need to tell us who you are so we know how to treat you. <laughs> Cause niggas on the top, they get treated differently than niggas on the bottom. And we don't we can't tell just by looking at you. You need to know for yourself. 
come and tell us, and then we'll handle it from there. So, <clears throat> so Tish, read the other, read the next part of that. All right. So my, that was uh, about to ask you. Mine says mine doesn't start off that way. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, Chris, what what, what dictionary are you reading from? I'm reading from uh, Black's Law Dictionary, fourth pocket edition. Pocket edition. See, okay. uh, you know, got the big edition. What's the, so, Tish, read it out of, the, out of the, you got the big one? Yes. All right, read that. All right, so uh, status is standing, state, or condition. There you go. Uh, yeah. Reynolds versus Pennsylvania Oil Company, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you don't need to Say it again. Yeah, you don't need to read the case. The case. Okay. The legal relation of individual to rest of the community. Mm -hmm. The legal uh, relation the right. of an individual to the rest of the community. Keep going. The rights, duties, capacities, and incapacities which determine a person to a given class. Damn. <laughs> so this is very important right here. <laughs> this is extremely important definition. Because read that. I want you to read that over one more time. The last part. Yeah. Okay. The rights, duties, capacities, and incapacities which determine a person to a given class. The very first phrase of that was what? The what? The rights. The rights. Stop right there. Now, <laughs> status tells you what your rights are or what rights you are protected, what rights you have and, what, and, and how they're protected. Now, let's go to the 14th Amendment. Real quick, <laughs> which which frees niggas, which supposedly free niggas. Okay. And status. So you have a we have our constitution, right? Yes. So yeah, Fourteenth Amendment. Read the second part after it says, "No state shall." No. You read that sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Okay, now, we just got to reading the word status. And status said it was your standing or condition, standing state or condition, your legal relation to the rest of the community, and the rights, duties, capacities, and incapacities which determine a person to a given class. Now, in this in this 14th Amendment, we just read off what word is missing? Rights. They <laughs> rights. If status determines your rights and then you're under a status that has no rights you mm -hmm. fucked right <laughs> makes sense so this is very this is something very simple to see if you just read if you just read it very carefully you can see the word rights is written every damn where else but in the place where it supposedly gives me my freedom Look at this, sovereign citizens are a great threat to the U.S. So let's actually watch this for a second and see what they're talking about. A new study says that the sovereign citizen movement, I think Clive and Bundy, is the number one threat to American public safety. So what does this mean for the future of counterterrorism policy? So this is why you very need to be very important about calling, or very aware about calling yourself uh, a sovereign. When I, when I became sovereign, this hadn't happened yet right here in the United States, but it's not coming from where you may think. A new study by the National Consortium for the Study of Terrorism and Responses to Terrorism, or START, has found that the sovereign citizen movement, right here in the United States, poses the biggest terrorist threat to our national security. START found that among law enforcement officials, sovereign citizens were more of a concern than Islamic extremists and domestic militia and patriots. <laughs> Sovereign citizens are Americans who believe that the federal government has no power over them, and that as a result, they're exempt from laws, regulations, and even federal taxes. And when confronted by federal and law enforcement officials, sovereign citizens 
have proven over and over again that they can be incredibly dangerous. For example, on May 20th, 2010, two police officers in West Memphis, Arkansas, thought they were making a normal highway traffic stop. Instead, both officers were shot and killed by the vehicle's occupants, who were members of the sovereign citizen movement. So with law enforcement officials becoming increasingly concerned about sovereign citizens, who exactly are these people? And what's being done to stop more potential violence from them? Joining me now for more on that is Mark Potok, Senior Fellow with the Southern Poverty Law Center and Editor-in-Chief of the SPLC's Intelligence Report. Mark, welcome back. Well, pleasure to be here, Tom. Thank you, Mark. Who exactly are sovereign citizens, and what are the beliefs that cause them to identify as such? Well, sovereign, it's incredibly complicated, a Byzantine belief system, but essentially they are people who believe that in particular federal laws, tax laws and criminal laws, do not apply to them. Uh, they have a whole set of connected beliefs, uh, such as the idea that if you file the right documents, uh, you will be able to wrest from the federal government uh, anywhere between $60,000 and $20 million. Uh, they are known for filing really crazy documents with courts, uh, with creating all kinds of fraudulent documents, uh, bank drafts, and so on. Uh, and they are also known for their violence. Uh, they have uh, been responsible for the murder of seven law enforcement officers since uh, the year 2000. Uh, and there have been a number of other very frightening uh, confrontations, typically on the road uh, when they are pulled over for driving, because one of the kind of subsidiary beliefs of these people is that they, uh, the government has no right to require them to have driver's licenses, uh, auto registrations, or insurance. Wow. You know, the, the, the first two things that you said, that they can uh, file certain papers with the government and, and get 20 million, and that, that's the Nigerian scam kind of stuff. Uh, it, where does this come from? It comes from an incredibly uh, yes, weird, Nigerian. complex theory. Look at how the scam gets the Nigerian, African, Nigerian scam <laughs> kind of stuff that basically says when the government went off the gold standard in 1933, uh, the money uh, of the government, the dollar bill, became instantly worthless. Uh, that ever since then, the government has been, in effect, mortgaging the future of all American citizens, uh, this via their birth certificates. Uh, what they are said to do is sell, the government is selling the value of each of our lifelong labors uh, to other governments in order to leverage the debt. Uh, so they, are the, they, they believe that the IRS has secret accounts uh, held in the name of each one of us. So if I or you only knew the correct documents to file with it the does. government, we could break loose. You know what, it actually does. Did you, did you guys ever see the video uh, that was going around on Facebook? of the one guy was given the federal, he was giving the um, account number of the treasury where that held your, uh, he was basically telling you how to access the tre your treasury account that had Yes, your, with the you, birth certificate number or something like that. With, the, with, the, with your social security number. That's right, right, like a bank account and right. they like paying bills and stuff with that. Yeah, did you ever see it? Did you ever try it? I, no, heck no, I saw something like that though. That shit worked. I won't do it. So they're gonna be, they're gonna be after you. I mean, is that legal? It's, it's not legal for them to have an account in your name without you knowing. Right, I know that. <laughs> That's not legal. So then, the, the, yeah. First of all, the treasury is a is a the treasury is a corporation, mm -hmm. which we about to go over in a little bit. But the treasury, treasury is a corporation, it's, and so it's the U.S. Treasury Inc. And so why does the U.S. Treasury Inc. Incorporation have a have a have a bank account in my name with my and my social security number is my bank is is my is a bank account that that actually has credit in it and you ain't and I've not been notified that's illegal so what I what I did is I tested it to see if it worked so I went on Amazon and uh, and I put the bank account on Amazon and I ordered and so most my folks were doing like little shit but I just wanted to see if it was going to work so I ordered like a thousand dollar computer and the shit went through. But and then it uh, and then it came back a couple of days because I think they they went over because like so many people were doing it, so at by like by the time I got to the I got to the account thing I think 
it had the, that video had like three, 3.5 million views. <laughs> so I think like 50, all these people were doing it with the bank account. So by the time I got to it, uh, they had probably, I think they had some type of, uh, they had some type of scam for the, for the, for the different things going through. I'm like, man, so they out here, it, it lets you know that, you know, there's shit going on behind the scenes that you have no idea that involves you. <laughs> it involves you. So just, you know, just, just showing you that real quick. Uh, so they, are the, they, they believe that the IRS has secret accounts uh, held in the name of each one of us. So if I or you only knew the correct documents to file with the government, we could break loose these funds uh, from the government, which would be forced to pay them to us. And is, uh, is needless this, to say, is this associated with that theory? I've, I've actually had people call into my radio show and try to, um, uh, to argue this that because their name is in all caps on their birth certificate, that they're actually a corporation or the government's a corporation and they're not, they're, maybe you can explain it better than me, but does this have, have to do with the all caps on the birth certificate thing? Yes, yes, it does. Uh, they believe that uh, the government puts your name in all capital letters on your birth certificate in particular, uh, because that somehow allows uh, the government to sell your future value value of your work and so on. They have a whole set of really bizarro beliefs uh, related to punctuation See, capitalization. Now, now, now this is the fucked up thing. So they'll air something like this, but it's a fact that your birth certificates are sold on the stock market. That's not, that's not a lie. Anybody can check that up. <laughs> it's not like something no one can check out. Nigga, anyone with a computer that can go and check out a QCIP <laughs> and a, and a, your, the number on your birth certificate and, and go check it out on Dun and Bradstreet or, or the stock market exchange and put the number in and it'll come back. Like, this is like, what the fuck? And so this is, you know, this is the misinformation type of people that they'll throw out there. Cause they, they, you know, when they don't want you to know some real shit. That's, uh, that's OCD, uh, you know, OCD combined with with paranoid schizophrenia kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that homeless people come up with about, you know, they're, they're out there watching me. I can't go indoors. I mean, who was the guy who started this? Well, it really began in the posse comatitis, uh, a violently uh, anti-Semitic and racist group in the late 70s and the 1980s. They came up with this idea uh, as well as a whole batch of related ideas that really have informed the militia movement and much of the radical right ever since. Uh, for instance, it was in the posse that the idea, of the, really the related idea of county supremacy came up, that there is no higher legitimate law enforcement officer than the county sheriff. Uh, that, of course, is the belief that informed the people at the Clive and Bundy ranch uh, this April when we very nearly saw a bloodbath when there was a confrontation between his supporters uh, and the Bureau of Land Management. Yeah, and I want to get to that uh, Clive and Bundy thing first. And what happened with Clive and Bundy? So he's saying they believe this crazy, that the, the sheriffs are this and the baller. And, and what happened with Clive and Bundy? Y'all know this story? What happened with that dude? Nothing, was it? It was a standoff, wasn't it? And it was standoff. About his herd? Huh? About his herd, about his property? Yeah, what, ha what happened Yeah. What happened up ultimately? With Clive and Buddy. They got off his land, didn't they? Yep, they yeah. got the fuck out. <laughs> they had to bounce. He won. Get the fuck out. Now, if it's all bullshit, how the hell did he win? <laughs> oh, they believe this crazy. Oh, my God. It's a, it, Yeah, Clive was like, uh, kick rocks. <laughs> Y'all kick rocks off, off the land. Now... Clive and Money don't really own the land. Aboriginals own the land. You have a better title to the land, and that's your that's your real status. But we'll, we'll get into that little. One real quick question: Is there an association between the uh, between this movement and uh, Waco? And then you know, I think it was two right, years look later. At, look uh, at, look at how they try to attach this to Waco. Crazy ass David Koresh would. He was on some old. He was God. He told he he believed he was Jesus, <laughs> reincarnated, and look how they equate this to that. He just trying to say the government that you believe in is bullshit, and we got proof of that. But because you are such sheeple, 
you won't even look at the evidence. You'll just call somebody who, who makes that claim crazy. But what happened? Get off my shit. So again, the reason we're watching this is just to show you guys the the negative connotation that sovereign movement have and that the sovereign movement has and why you need to be very careful about making moves. Blowing up the federal building. Well, Tim McVeigh's partner uh, in the 1995 uh, blowing up the building in Oklahoma City, Terry Nichols, was in fact a sovereign citizen. He held what was uh, then referred to as an asseveration ceremony uh, in which he declared that he was a sovereign citizen uh, and thus, or so he believed, uh, he severed all ties to the government. He was really quickly before we before it gets out of here. So he said it was started with Posse Comitatus in the 70s, late, you know, 70s and, and 80s. The reason they, the Posse Comitatus, the main reason that they started this, you know, militia movement, you know, with the weapons and stuff like that. And any, before I say it, does anybody know why? Can you, can you guess why? 70s? Early 70s, all the way through that, through the 70s, 80s. Panthers. Huh? Panthers, Black Panthers. Black Panthers. Huey. Go look at old footage, first of all, Huey. Huey looked like a damn bodybuilder. Like, go look, there's, there's a picture of Huey. I think he was coming out of jail or something like that. He was standing on top of a car. Huey was cut. Dude, he looked like he, he's an a, a Olympic athlete. Big, swole, crazy dude, nigga, talking smart as fuck because he knew the law. They was college students, him and, him and Bobby. They was like, what? And they got guns? Oh, nigga, what? <laughs> they was like, huh? They weren't, Caucasians weren't worried about the, the Second Amendment until, until Huey knew. He's the one who brought the information out about the Second Amendment. The Black Panthers. Show them that nigga, you can't take our guns when we're sitting on the street. And then Caucasians were seeing this and was like, How come you ain't not arresting the niggers? And then the information came out, oh well, we can't arrest them because of the Second Amendment. And so then that's how the IRA got jumped. That's how the IRA got smashed. In our the NRA, excuse me. But the NRA got smashed. They were like, What? Niggas can have guns? <laughs> nigga, that scared the shit out of Caucasians that niggas could have guns legally. Nigga, they started gunning up like a motherfucker. So that was the reason for it. That's the whole reason for your sovereign movement, really, was the Black Panther. <laughs> Congress slick, uh, in which he declared that he was a sovereign citizen, uh, and thus, or so he believed, uh, he severed all ties to the government. He was no longer a slave of the government. Uh, you know, these are people who believe that if in a legal document you capitalize the U in the United States, that you have somehow acknowledged that the government is real and has real power and you become a slave as a result. Right. So they have all kinds of strange punctuation Mark, uh, practices right. that reflect their beliefs. Mark, a recent report out from the SPLC, uh, your group argued that the Bundy Ranch standoff was highly coordinated, reflecting threats of larger far-right militia movement. Um, uh, explain that. Well, we had a reporter on the scene at the Bundy Ranch uh, who talked to the primary organizer uh, of the uh, snipers uh, at the ranch, a man named Ryan Payne, a militia leader, uh, who explained in great detail how he and Clive and Bundy, the night before the big confrontation on April 12th, actually planned the positions uh, of the snipers uh, among the militiamen who came out to support the Bundys. So in other words, they were, in effect, conspiring uh, to set up a situation uh, in which these militiamen would be able to train their weapons on the law enforcement officials uh, the next day. And that's precisely what happened. Uh, really, the other part was the idea that the Bundy standoff and the fact that the BLM backed down uh, has really energized the radical right. They feel they yeah. want a great victory. We have, we have less, less than a minute left, about a half a minute. To what extent does this tie into the old Turner Diaries novel about how government overreach leads to all the good white uh, Christians rising up with their guns and killing people of color and Jews? Well, the Turner Diaries were explicitly racist and anti-Semitic, and in fact, sovereign citizen ideology 
initially started as a white supremacist idea. The theory was that black people cannot be sovereign citizens because they are only citizens by virtue of the 14th Amendment. That was an act of government. Therefore, uh, when they accepted citizenship in that way, black people became slaves of the government. Woo! <laughs> Now, those motherfuckers is breaking that shit off. See, this was because niggas had guns. So it was like, these niggas don't have the right to have guns. They're not sovereign. They're not free. The whole reason for the sovereign movement was to take the guns away from the niggas. The Black Panthers. And they looked in there and they was like, oh, wait a minute. You ain't got no rights under the 14th Amendment? Therefore, you don't have the right to have guns. So now you see, again, you are the initiators of everything, or you the cause for everything. Niggas, Caucasians running scared. You got sovereign citizen movements 40 years later because niggas were scared, uh, Caucasians scared niggas had guns in the street and was able to call cops pigs <laughs> without being taken to jail. So there's a, a relationship to a uh, racist ideology, although that's been largely forgotten in the last few years. Mark Potag, thanks so much for uh, illuminating the issue for us and for the great work you do. Thanks, Mark. A real pleasure. Thanks. So just so you guys know, when you're dealing with sovereignty or you're dealing with law, you're dealing with, I mean, we did told you before, common law and statutory law. So there's different types of, uh, you know, as we get in, we watch these sovereign, we watch these sovereignty videos, and all this different type of shit. There are so many different type of movements going on, like I said at the beginning. So you want to you want to find your lane and stick in your lane, because in court you have to be right and correct. So that means you can't be mix matching philosophies and bring it in here. And be you know bring one law from here and another law from there and try to mix match them and it ain't gonna work. <coughs> Excuse me, it's not gonna work. So, uh, like the Moors have their their line to push. You know we're Moors. We got the treat the Treaty of Peace and Friendship that gives us power and in force in America because America uh, Morocco was the first to recognize America. They really say that America is Morocco. They say it's Al Morocco or Mexico which is not. And so this is, this is the holes, and that's where the holes are in their, in their philosophy when they're trying to say that Morocco owned this landmass. Like, dude, how can Morocco own this landmass when the Lenape aboriginals are more than are 12 to 15,000 years old than on this landmass right here? And there was no Morocco 15, 12 to 15,000 years ago. It, didn't, it was nowhere near existence. <laughs> so what are you talking about? How can this be Morocco? Al Morocco? or a Mexican.